The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as always, the Eagles fan, AJ Epigarth. What's up, man? That's right. That's right. S a D Patriots. S a D. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So we got a good show ahead of us. Getting ready for Week Eleven. Um. You know, not 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 some not big topics to talk about, but you know, we've got some reaction uh, from from last week's you know returning players and some injuries. And that's basically like the big the big topics this week. Um, you know, it's there. It's enough interest that I feel like people need to know what's going on and and how to react with their fantasy teams. Um, so we'll get to that in just a second. But first, man, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. What you got, man? All right, so I went and uh, hit up the store that's actually a little closer to my house because they they have a fairly good selection as well, and I didn't want to, you know, do a repeat here. I know it's okay, but I like to be a little different. So I decided to get a large bottle of the Rogue. It's called Dead and Dead. It's a dead guy ale aged in dead guy whiskey, whiskey barrels. Uh, it says it complements the flavor profile of our classic dead guy ale with oak and vanilla notes from our whiskey barrels. Uh, it's a 7.9er, but you know this is a fairly large bottle, so um, it's good though. It's it's definitely. Uh, Different from the the standard IPA that that we're used mm-hmm. to drinking, so I like mm-hmm. to switch that up as well every now and then, and I like it. Cool, man. All right, so I am drinking, and I'll and I'll pull a you. Um, ah, there you go. <laughs> uh, I'm drinking a a beer from a company that I had a, a couple weeks ago, True Respite. Uh, this one is the Nightingale. It is a 7.3 hazy IPA. Um, I gave this one a three and a half on Untapped. You know, it's solid, but not not my favorite. The other one, I believe, I gave like a four or four and a quarter or something like that. I forget. Uh, but but this one's all right. Uh, just you know, pretty standard hazy IPA. So, cheers. Indeed, cheers. As I like miss my mouth. That's cool. All right. <laughs> I uh, probably didn't need to admit that, but that's cool. We're all here for honesty. <laughs> we don't exactly. hide anything from you guys. All right, man. Um, kind of liked what we did last week with you kind of running the show. So uh, let's try that again. Yeah, let's do it. Go for it, man. All right. So uh, unlike last week's hellish bye week abyss with six teams off, we're back to the normal of uh only four teams off but uh as i noted today when i re-upped the uh the running back depth chart you're still kind of getting hit pretty hard with the running backs being out this week you got the packers out so you're losing aaron jones and jamal williams you got saquon out with the giants chris carson is out with the seahawks and Derrick Henry is out with the Titans. So coming off his, what, 188-yard game or some ridiculous nonsense. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of scraping the barrel here uh, if you don't have much depth at, at the position. And hopefully you're not, you know, rolling deep with two of these guys that are off because that would not be good. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the first little headline here. Uh, But speaking of the running backs, the next thing we have to mention here is that Kareem Hunt is now back. Uh, His eight-game suspension is over. He is, uh, as far as I know, he's playing tonight. I've just kind of tuned into the game and haven't really caught much of it yet. Um, 
I mean, what do you what do you think about his usage uh, so far? I mean, I know it's a very small sample size of one game, but what did what did it tell you? What it told me is that you know Nick Chubb's still going to get his. Uh, you don't have to worry one bit about him. You know he's got like four, maybe five games in a row of twenty carries, and that includes last week when Hunt was in the game. Um, you know maybe that drops down to like 18, but you're not worried about Chubb at all. He's still going to be an RB one. Um, with hunt though, you know, he saw four carries last week. Um, you know, 30 yards, a great yard per carry clip. But what really shocked me was that he saw nine targets and then he caught seven of them for 44 yards. Um, I mean, that's like, that's like James White territory as far as usage from the yeah. backfield. And I don't see any reason why they wouldn't go away from it. I mean, that's just another weapon for them to utilize. Um, you know, for whatever reason, OBJ and Landry, you know, obviously great talents, but just not getting it done on their own. So, you know, we saw Landry have a great game last week. OBJ was okay. Um, you know, they, they all saw plenty of targets. So I think, Everybody can thrive in his offense, and especially in PPR leagues, Hunt's going to be very, very useful. So I have no issues at this point throwing him in a flex. I know it's you know they're playing tonight, uh, or if yeah. you're listening on Friday or this weekend, they played Thursday night. So if you didn't slide him in, you know no big deal. Um, but you know I think going forward, I believe tonight he's already got. Uh, I thought I had the box score pulled up, but I don't. I believe when I looked earlier, it was like three catches for thirty something yards already, and that was in the like near the end of the first quarter. So I mean, he's he's being heavily used already. Um, yeah. So he he's somebody I think you can definitely slide in there, without a doubt. Yeah, I I definitely think he's you know RB three or or flex territory for sure. Um, Absolutely. And easily just because of the receptions. I mean, he's had. In in 2017, he had 53 receptions for 455 yards. Um, last year, he you know only played in 11 games, but he was at you know about half that you know 26 for 378. So the yardage was still there. I mean, he had a 14 and a half yards per reception last year. That's that's wide receiver territory mm-hmm. as it is almost. I mean you know, uh, slightly under, but, you know, I, I definitely think that, that his value is going to come in, in the passing game. And, um, he's you know, great he in space. Also, I mean, that's all there is to it. So, yeah, I, he's, he's a talented guy. So you get that kind of talent on the field, you want to implement it. And, and I think that's the best way for them to do it. Um, yeah, and I mean the other reason why I would keep him in that like RB three flex area is because when you are that pass catching back, you kind of lack, in my opinion, you lack that touchdown upside because that's going to go to Chubb yeah. like when they're close to the goal line. Um, it's going to take you know the three or four weeks where he just breaks one, or if he's you know they design a play for him in the red zone, which isn't un- out of the question. But it's, no, it's got a lower not. percentage of happening than pounding it in from the three yard line with Chubb. Yeah, I, I, Chubb's definitely going to be the running back, and Hunt's going to be the receiving back. I mean, mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much what I added to the chart today. Um, so sticking with the running game, what the hell are we doing with David Johnson? Um, I, I mean. It, Two weeks now. <laughs> he, he already had some injury issues that we knew about. Uh, he had that fluke game where he came in for, I, I don't know, maybe a snap and then actually probably ran off the field before the ball was actually snapped, um, thinking he was a sub and then realized he wasn't sort of deal. No, it was crap injury. And, and, and I get it. You got to You got to take care of yourself first and foremost. You know, all of these players really do, but he didn't do shit this past week. What what are we doing with this guy? It, it sucks, man. I'm an owner of him in the dynasty league. 
I have to start him in my dynasty league because I literally have no other options, right? Um, but in a standard redraft league, I'm I'm going to guess you could go out and find something else to start. I'm avoiding him wherever possible, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I mean, if you guys check out the – if you haven't already seen the video of – that's floating around Twitter all over the place. Uh, go check out the rankings on the fantasy six pack page. I embedded the tweet with the video. Dude. He looks like Santa Claus trying to carry a sack of sack of toys, dude, trying to run the ball with it. Like it's awful. <laughs> it's really bad. I mean, it's just, just sort of like jogs to the right. And then he's like, Oh, I'm going to try this. Ugh, no, <laughs> like, that is, I, I mean, it's come looks- out. Yeah, it, it looks like OJ has come out of jail and retirement to rumble and stumble for two yards. I don't know, man. Negative. OJ may actually be better than this at this point. It's pretty. It looks really bad. <laughs> I mean, the I look. They've already be... they've already come out and said that he's not 100 percent healthy. He's still dealing with the back and the ankle injuries. And look, I mean, I'll tell you, from somebody who has semi chronic back injuries, it's brutal. You can't yeah. move. And when it stiffens up on you like that, your body just does not respond, no matter how much you try to. Um, so, like I said, I mean, at this point, I'm not starting him if I can help it. It sucks, he, man. He kind of reminds me in that video of, like you said, somebody with a back issue whose back is locked, and then he's just kind of like one of those wavy arm guys like <laughs> out front of a used car shyster dealership no those guys are those legs. guys move faster man <laughs> well those things actually move a lot better um i mean i feel like if i were out there and was given the ball on that misdirection i could have probably had a lot more pop acceleration wise and then i would have been completely destroyed but I would have at least hey, been running faster I mean, the other maybe direction. Maybe would have made the edge, unlike him. So <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't have. Anyway, hey, keep dreaming, man. Life. You keep never dreaming know. with that Eagles jersey on. What's that? Keep dreaming with that Eagles jersey on. Hey, man, they got <laughs> they got all kinds of running backs, and they're all better than DJ right now. Yes, yes, they are. All right. So, all right. Well, let's let's move on here. I've had enough of the running backs for the day for now um matt stafford another uh very questionable back injury right now um totally a late scratch in in my opinion at least and then jeff driscoll comes in to take over for him last week what the hell happened here in detroit is this Matt Patricia playing Bill no, Belichick with the injuries. I mean, they were they were. It, this report came out. I want to say late Friday that he has been dealing with this, like pretty serious back injury, and you know comes out later the weekend that it was actually like broken vertebrae. Um, so, you know, I he's not playing this weekend in my opinion. Um, it, it would it would. Seriously shocked me. He hasn't practiced all week. He's been staying on the sideline apparently. Um, so it's it's unfortunate because you know a lot of people were starting to buy into the fact that like Matt Stafford could win them their leagues. I mean the the volume that they were having to to pass was incredible because obviously the running game is just absolutely nothing once Carry On went out and even when he was there it wasn't very good. They were just passing a bunch. Yeah. So it's unfortunate because people kind of were were really hoping this was going to be their ticket to the championship. Or at least part of it. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely a huge hit. And Detroit, I just feel like, has suffered so much in their time in the NFL, you know, since Barry Sanders just kind of up and left. I mean, even when he was there, they weren't winning a whole hell of a lot. He was just Calvin Johnson left early. Yeah, Yeah. but, you know, they're this is definitely a huge blow to them. You know, Stafford. Stafford's a pretty talented guy. You know, he's definitely, uh, I would say, in the upper, you know, half of quarterbacks for, from a fantasy standpoint um, and consistency wise. But again, that is driven by that volume. So this is definite hit. 
uh, to their their team and uh, to fantasy owners who were trying to bank on him. So hopefully you have another you know better starter to go with. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's but, not even it's not even just Stafford that you're worried about. I mean, like, so people weren't yeah. relying like a lot of people weren't seriously relying on Stafford, at least not early on, right? So you likely had at least somebody else on your team who could play quarterback. Right, and it's yeah. easily easier to replace. Where we're worried here is is the receiving core. You know, it's it's Galladay, it's Marvin Jones. You know, at a lesser yeah. rate, Avendola and Hawkinson. Um, you know, last week was decent for Galladay, but it was really one play. It was like one forty-seven yard touchdown catch late in the game. Otherwise, he would have had two catches for ten yards. Uh, Jones had five for seventy-seven, so that's decent. Amendola was four for twenty nine, not great. Um, they also had a ton of targets, so nine, six, eight. You know, Hawkinson was kind of a three for forty seven, no, nothing fantastic. Um, it's it's obviously a blow here, and you know, if if you go back to the last three games, kind of when this passing offense really took off, it felt like, um, you know, the last three games with Stafford before this. You're looking at Galladay with you know seven receptions off 17 targets for 276 and three touchdowns. Jones now of course that four touchdown game was mixed into this one, so it's a little little yeah. little touchdown heavy, but still 28 targets, 22 receptions, 27 246 and five. <laughs> yeah, um, and then Amendola still man like PPR monster here right? 19 catches off 24 targets, 219. It's it's solid man like. You could legit use those guys every week. Um, yeah. Now it's you're probably still using them because the talent is there. At least Galladay and Jones, right? I yeah, mean, Amendola you, at this point is Amendola is okay. Like he, potentially droppable. Um, I mean, unless you're desperate, one of these last two weeks for the buy, right? Um, and and Hawk, I mean, Hawk had week one and then two weeks ago, and that's it. That's his yeah, entire season. I, I mean, I don't really love Hawkinson, but, you know, we'll get into that, I think, next. But um, it's just one of those, like, I mean, like, I've got Galladay in one league. I'm using him. I've got Jones in another league. I'm using him because, I mean, I'm obviously, I've got, I'm getting a little hurt by bye weeks in all of those leagues. But I still think I'm throwing them out there until they just, you know, until it's like multiple weeks in a row of bust. I mean, right now they haven't busted yet. It's yeah, not. You're, they've definitely been dropped down a peg, right? Galladay was like fringe wide receiver one every week. Now he's like wide receiver two three range. Jones was probably two three range. He's now like low three range in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's just Driscoll's not Driscoll's not a guy who's going to pass very efficiently most weeks. And we saw it three catches off nine targets, five catches. I mean, five for six is good, but four for eight, not great. You know, like <laughs> you got, you got to get the ball on target to these guys. And he's, he's just not going to be reliable enough, which is unfortunate. But yeah. So moving on, you kind of uh, alluded to it here a bit. Um, tight end struggles. Now we have just talked about Hawk a little bit. You have Austin Hooper, who's been the best tight end pretty much all season, is out for a month now. Kittle is likely out again after missing last week. I mean, who are we turning to at this point? I mean, there's there's got to be something for this catcher of football. Yeah, so I wrote down some names. You know, the the top ones, at least this week, you know, because – you're just hoping these guys come back and come back in time for it to matter for you. Um, top one, honestly, is, is OJ Howard. Um, I, I know everybody's going, oh, like why? You know, yeah, he scored last week, which was pretty predictable. Um, I, I I threw him in one of my lineups in a – I threw him in Scott Fishbowl. I have him in the tight end premium league. <laughs> it worked out. He scored. Um but I mean, like, he's still the most talented out of all of those guys. Um, the next one I'm looking at here is Noah Fant, and and last week he was pretty heavily used with the the backup quarterback there. So 
you that's the only thing you're kind of banking on there is that that's going to continue. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's not the greatest matchup, Minnesota. But I mean, look, the theme here is just like you're. These are all ho- you know, hope and prayer guys, right? You're just you're throwing darts at this point. There's no anybody who tries to tell you like, oh my god, you must start this tight end is lying to you <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Like it is straight up like it's just it's such a crapshoot. Like you might as well put the names in a hat and pull one out and be like, oh cool, this guy. Um I was on I was on a a, a podcast for WTOP um around our area um yesterday and it and it and it went out this morning. Uh and the guy asked me about Daniel Fells and I was like, sure. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like you're talking about my number twentieth tight end rank this week. Fine, yeah, he's been scoring, so sure. I mean, the problem with him is Will Fuller's coming back this week, so you know maybe target share goes down for him. But he wasn't a heavily targeted guy; he was just getting s- touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, very, that's all. That's all you can really do with these guys. You know, another one is Gasecki. Like we've seen his target share go up. Now it's a bad matchup uh. against Buffalo. Um. It, oh, Dwelly, he was such a huge ad for last week too, right? And he sucked. He was yeah. absolute garbage last week. Yeah, I mean, and and you know, and I think one of the more obvious ads at this point is Dwelly. Uh, yeah, you know, Kittle's direct replacement, and I don't think he's anything great, and he wasn't really utilized very well in the Seattle game, in my opinion. Um, but with with the injuries that are there in San Francisco, you know, we've got Emmanuel Sanders likely out. We've got Mostert likely out. Um, you know, the receiving core we know isn't that great without Emmanuel Sanders, even though Debo is awesome. He's got the drops. You know, Dwelly could see an increased usage there, and he's playing Arizona. So there you go. Uh, that yeah. That's probably one of the reasons why I would <sighs> – maybe take a chance over him over all the other guys but uh, it's it's hard it's really hard to predict at this point because these guys just don't have none of these guys are consistent have the proven track record to to do anything i mean uh, is there anybody else you see out there available like you know i'd say like 50 percent or less at this point that even remotely interests you i, I mean i just picked i just kind of picked a few names that screamed yeah. out to me but I mean, I'm looking at a couple of guys here, um, and the first one who was was a pretty big ad coming into this week was uh, was Jacob Hollister. Granted, well, bye week this week this though. Week. That's the problem. So it's by, I didn't he, list so him he, for that he reason. He doesn't he doesn't help you at all this week. But right, I mean his his first two games that he played, week seven and eight, were very pedestrian. His last two games. You know, six targets, only four receptions, only 37 yards, two touchdowns. That's huge. You know, last week against San Fran, granted the game went into overtime, so it was a little longer. Um, Ten matter, targets, he, he eight it receptions, out before that. 62, and the touchdown. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's been really good. But again, move on. He's not he, going to help you this week. Right. Um, but the guy I do like on here, well, there's two. Kyle Rudolph finally... Yeah has really turned in. He's he's fifty three percent owned, so he's a little higher than where we were going, but you know, he's been in double digit figures the last three of the last four games. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the Washington again, he's game touchdown being the outlier dependent. there. But again, it's touchdown dependent. Uh, but he's you know what though? Touchdowns in those that, three that's games. a good call. Uh, for some reason I didn't look at him. I'm just kinda like anti Rudolph at this point. Um, yeah, I, which is weird to say around. He hasn't you know. done anything up until week seven. Well, you know, you got to so think though. Why. What happened around that time? That's when Thielen got hurt. Thielen went so out. So there you go. So, so you know, maybe that's not Thielen, a bad play. He's Thielen touchdown could be or bust, out though. again this week. He, he yeah. should oh, he's be out again be. this week. So yeah, Rudolph. Rudolph. I'm a with good you, man. Play this that's week. A, that's a good one. Goddard's um, an interesting one too. He's a little lower owned. Um. Yeah, you know, I, I'm Goddard forced could be to play Goddard this week in my dynasty league because I have Kittle and Hooper both out. Yeah, um, but the third guy I have here is uh, is Jack Doyle. Um, yeah, you know he was he was kind of a, a darling coming into the season. 
uh, after last year, and and everybody seemed to be higher on him than Ebron. Um, but it, he's kind of in the same pattern there, you know. Up through week seven, he only had one touchdown, and that was now his he's... only game in double digit figures. Uh, the last three weeks, though, mm-hmm. he's he's consistent with his targets um, from week eight to ten at five, four, and four. Mm-hmm. But he's caught four, three, and three. Um, the yardage in, in week eight was his best at sixty-one, best on the season, mind you. Uh, the last two weeks, the yardage has been down, but again, touchdowns. I mean. Yeah. So if you find a guy that's going to get these touchdowns, and both of those two weeks were with Brian Hoyer at the helm, um, it's likely that Brissett will be back this week. So I still don't know no T.Y. Although hurts him, still that no T.Y. could hurt him. Still no T.Y. So that helps, but Funches might be back. So you know, I don't know what that's going to do. I, you know, I kind of think Funches is, is a is a really good big target in the red zone which does yeah. hurt Doyle and Ebron a little bit but yeah it's so. again I think we're kind of the the lesson to be learned here is good luck <laughs> um, I mean unless yeah. you've got Waller unless you've got you know Everett who's also banged up Cook there's, just, dude, there's really not much Kelsey God, this is not Henry I, Andrews. Like Cook, the, that's it. Cook that's is it, one guys. I love this week. Um, he's finally seems like he's gotten back on track uh, a little bit. I mean, yeah. not that he was really ever on track. I feel like this year, but he, he's still got an eighty-two percent ownership, so he's definitely high. But if for some reason he is sitting there in your league, he's got a real nice matchup against Tampa this week. So I, I I like him a lot this week, but you kind of might have to play matchups with him after that. Oh, dude! So. More bad news for the Steelers before we get moving on here. So we saw James Conner go to the sideline for shoulder. He's out for the rest of the game, and I, I saw the play happen where Juju got smashed by three people. Um, I, I did not out. see that play. My phone went off with fantasy yep. fantasy life app i'm sure that's what you're Juju, reading right now Juju, Same thing juju's done yep so oh man that's brutal connor and juju all done for the night so uh, super thanks connor i love you so much for not helping my team <laughs> anyway uh, all right well speaking of injuries let's uh let's move on here we got a couple uh couple quarterback injuries to highlight here um, but in a good way, there, uh, there are returning quarterbacks. We have, uh, Jacoby Brissett, who I just mentioned. Um, what, what do you, what do you think about him coming back? Obviously Hoyer was complete garbage last week against one of the worst teams in the league. Um, Brissett's been pretty good though. I mean, yeah, Brissett's been good. Uh, without Ty, I mean, it, it really does limit whoever is back there. Um, yeah, I mean, Brissett's a streaming quarterback still in my book, unless unless the matchup is 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 prime. But I mean, still, like he's not anybody that you want to have to rely on from week to week. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I've been kind of relying on him a little bit in my dynasty league, but I have so many random quarterbacks that are like not exceptional <laughs> unfortunately but they play and they get me some points he's been he's been overall pretty good in that league but i, I am also using have... him over once <laughs> what's that i am going to use him over once i i do not blame you one bit um the other guy in that dynasty league that i have is also a guy we have listed here that's mr Big D Nick himself, Nick Foles, is finally returning to the Jacksonville squad. Uh, he's coming off a bye, you know, so it was kind of already known with them going into the bye mm-hmm. that he was going to be back and take over his starting role from Minshew's mustache. Um, so what, what does this impact have 
uh, or what kind of impact does this have on the offense in general? I mean, you're talking Fournette, you're talking Chark, you're talking Conley, you're talking Didi. What do you, what are your thoughts on Foles? Yeah, so I I think it's going to be overall a plus um, for this offense. Maybe not as big of a plus for like Shark, but uh, I I think overall this will be a plus for the for the running game. Uh, Fournette's been good, but it's been all yardage. I'm hoping he finds the end zone soon. Um, you know, Conley probably about the same. I think the guy who really is going to see the uptick though is Didi. I mean, all we heard in the off season was how Didi and him were kind of clicking. Um, yeah. and then, you know, yeah, shark had the good week one. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see now. I, it, I'm a wait and see guy still in this case. I want to see DD, you know, do it. Um, before I just plug him in. Now, obviously, everybody's scenario is different, so you may have to play him if you own him. But yeah. uh, you know, if, if I've got him sitting there, I'm, I'm probably waiting one week to just kind of see it happen um, and make sure that Foles is, is right. You know, let him get the rust knocked off, kind of thing. Yeah. So, and, and Didi because he's coming back from injury as well. Well, yeah, so, that's true. I you know, mean, get, that, that's let, let both these guys thing. get on the same page. Um, yeah, and get uh, back that, in the that's game. That's the biggest action. thing for me. But, I'm glad Foles is back. I feel like hopefully he could have shaken some of that rust off over the bye week. Um, but I, I'm I'm excited to see him back on the field. Yeah. But so. but to, just to quick summarize, like I I still think Shark's going to be the guy. Like I think he's proven the plays should be more run for him in the passing game than Didi at yeah. this point. Um, yeah, you know, Shark's been so good this this year. It he's earned that right to have him be the number one guy at this point. I, yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. So what are we looking at for running backs here? Yeah, man. So I'm going to start here with Darius Geis returning. It's about damn time. Maybe he'll last longer than a game. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, fingers I just, crossed. Not me giving you double. double I know. Uh, I know. I know. I, I just he's he's like the one lone guy. Him and like McLaurin, uh, they're like the lone players I actually root for for the Redskins. Like guys, just seems like a legit good guy who just is so excited to play football, but he just keeps getting injured. Like every time you talk to him, he's got a big smile on his face. He's like excited. He's like just talking, and then he goes out and gets hurt. And then he gets hurt again, and you're like he's worked so hard to get back. And the guy's talented; like you can see it in the, you know, in the preseason when he's played, he's talented. So I really yeah. want to see it happen. I hope they don't overwork him. Uh, it sounds like they're going to split work between him and AP. Which week one they decided to sit AP and just overwork Geis, and he got hurt. So go figure. Um, now there will be no Chris Thompson, so that's what, um, you know, so I'm guessing guys will get a lot of the work out of the backfield, although I guess they have, they still have, um, the small wood. Yeah. So I guess he could take small some of the passing. There, yeah. yeah. So he could take some of the passing down work too, but, um, I'm excited to see what guys is going to do. He's another wait and see guy though. I'm not plugging him in my lineups yet. I don't know if you're any different with that. If you have him anywhere. Uh, um, I do have him in one or two leagues. I I have him plugged in in the one, but I I have a, another option that I kind of like. I mean, and the, I might the Jets. The one thing they're good on. at in defense, man, is is run. So I don't know if I'm doing that yet, especially since yeah. it's going to be a split workload. That's my take. Yes. On. So I I have to I have to think about that one because for me. I mean, my team, the one that I'm thinking about is one of my Yahoo leagues. And I know that I'm trying, I'm trying to pull it up to see. I mean, I've got like Howard, but I don't want to play him again. Well, Howard, me. So here's the next guy. I'll, I'll say this while you're looking it up. Howard's yeah. questionable with a shoulder injury. Yeah. So he might not play. And I don't love the matchup with him either because it's New England. Oh, yeah, I I hate the match. But here's the thing, though. Here's my question to you. If Howard doesn't play, 
how much do we just go all in on Sanders? <sighs> or do we? I, I mean, I, Especially I, don't, in DFS. I don't know. I don't know what his price it's is. It's still but... such a tough matchup. I, I mean, I'm I'm very interested to watch this game, and it better be televised for me down here. Or I'm going to be very upset and have to find a way to stream it. But, you know, that, Let's go to a that's bar, man. a tough call. Because, <laughs> what's that? Let's go to yeah. a bar. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I might, I might be up for that. You're like, well, wait a minute. Uh, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> okay. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Twist my arm, please. Um. Yeah, I, I, I have Howard. I have David Johnson, um, and oh. Zach Pascal. Those are my options to play over Geis. Um, uh, Pascal. That that's who I was yeah. thinking, but I I don't know. It's I, I gotta, yeah, that's, that's gotta, not that's not I, an easy so The other problem is that I still need a kicker in that league. Now I could have. I could drop the Jets' defense and play New England, and then pick up a kicker. But yes. I'm I'm just waiting for Kittle to go officially out, so I can just oh, so you get the IR. IR. Yeah, that'll work. And then I don't even care about the kicker. Exactly. All so, right, man, let's move. Let's move through this. So uh, San Francisco. I talked about Burita being out with an angle injury. Uh, Mostert is also questionable. So. We're looking at Jeff Wilson time backing up Coleman. So there yeah. you go there. Uh, Le'Veon Bell is questionable with a rib injury. They're saying he's likely to suit up, but, I mean, you're you're using Bell, especially in PPR leagues, because he's oh, yeah. just going to see just dump off after dump off, but it's not been the year we all hoped for Bell. Let's be honest there. Um, Devonta Freeman out with a foot sprain. Uh, Brian Hill time. I mean, he did all right last week, man. What are we thinking about he, Brian Hill? He did real well. Um, and, you know, true story, sad story. Uh, here again, we'll bring up my absolutely pathetic Scott Fishbowl team and uh, yet another boneheaded you move own by yours truly. Oh, you picked him up. Again. I picked up Brian Hill oh. like two weeks ago. Only just, you. Just Can you just tell me whoever you drop? I, add, I mean, he's been on the running to back depth chart for me for for weeks, but I, Freeman had something else going on, and then Ito Smith started playing, and it was like right. It might have even been right when when Ito finally got concussed. I was like, eh, I'm gonna go go take a flyer on Hill. Yeah, man. And then I dropped him for. I don't. know. Jay Ajayi again, probably. <laughs> some some stupid-ass freaking you move. You would. You would. And Eagles fan. No, it was it was <laughs> Pascal that I dropped for Ajayi oh, at least right. one time. Right, at least that was decent. I'll give you that one. What? Drop oh, oh, you dropped Pascal for no, I thought I you dropped said you dro- Pascal oh, damn. for Ajayi. Right. And then it's like, oh, oh that's brutal, dude. for a couple weeks. I that's immediately brutal. went back in to try to pick him up and somebody else in my league had gotten him. I was Ugh, like, sucks, man. Bitch. You need to just tell anyway, me whoever you drop so I can see if they're out there in my league. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I might as well because everybody I drop turns into gold immediately not, after I drop. I'm them. not doing that well either. I'm like in, I'm like in the top 300, which is whatever. Um, my team's been kind of mediocre, unfortunately, but I will say, Hey, Kevin, hello. Number 11. Congrats, bro. That is phenomenal, oh, yeah, dude. Top 11. Keep it going, man. Let's take down a championship for Fantasy Six Pack, man. That'd be fucking awesome. Um, that, would, that would be sweet. Uh, so, Ty Johnson, Detroit, he did practice today. Uh, I don't think this really matters. Do you care? No. I mean, it's Detroit. We've already talked about them ad nauseum. They're, they're just not a running team right now. I mean, it's a it's sadly a slight hit to JD McKissick. I, I guess I don't know. I mean, he he's more of a passing back anyway. So yeah, it's yeah, I, I don't know. All right, man. That's all I got for running backs. Receivers. All right. Man. So on to the receivers. We have Mr. Emmanuel Sanders 
is questionable with a rib injury. Um, he he suffered this last week in the Monday night game, or it was, was it the yep. week before? During yeah, it was during okay. the game. Yeah, yeah. So I thought fairly early though, because I remember mm-hmm. my phone going off about it. So he's questionable. Keep an eye on him. I mean, he's got an awesome matchup against Arizona this week if he can play. Uh, rib injuries are always kind of fickle, though, so I would lean towards him not playing, uh, which just opens things back up for Debo. Um, you got Brandon Cooks has already been ruled out due to his concussion that has been lingering for, what, three, four weeks now? Um Keep an eye on him. I, I don't. I don't know when he's coming back at this point. Yeah, that's um, not good. Alshon, shocker. The Eagles have a injured wide receiver and an issue there. <laughs> hey, this is why I like Goddard this week, man. Honestly, I yeah. I mean, big I'm, I'm time wild Goddard, like Goddard just really comes in. Now, uh, sidebar with that, we did not have it in the news and notes, but I will throw it in here. The Eagles signed Jordan Matthews. No, this is not deja vu. Wait, that yes, it is. was a couple is. weeks ago, wasn't it? No, they just signed him, I think. Uh, oh, I know they were week. looking at him a couple weeks they ago. Were, they were working him out again, but yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I mean, I don't know. Jordan Matthews is is okay. He knows the offense, though. This is his now third stint in no. three years, no, which no, no. sounds really sad. I'm going to be honest. Uh, we spent too much time on Jordan Matthews. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> this is so a that's no. that. Alshon is the bigger story there. Ankle injury, keep an eye on him. Um, Thielen, we already talked about a little bit. He is doubtful with this hamstring injury. I don't think he's playing this week. Um, Hopefully he can get back in week 12. uh, Or I'm sorry, week 13, because I believe Minnesota has the bye in week 12. So I think they should smartly give him another week off um, and go from there. Will Fuller, you already said he is nearing a return. I, I mean, when he does return, if it's this week or or next, I mean, how does this affect Hopkins and Stills? I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to research the exact numbers, but I mean, we saw it earlier this year, man. When Will Fuller was in the lineup, uh, Hopkins wasn't getting those like number one receiver looks. For whatever reason, which is completely bizarre to me, um, and you know, Stills, I feel like can stay kind of where he is. He'll take a slight bump, but that's not as big for him. Um, I mean, you're still starting D Hop, but it's yeah. just kind of like, what the hell? Like, you just have to hope that like him and him and uh, Watson, while Fuller was out kind of got back on the same page and he just got trusted again. Cause if not, I mean like the owners who have him, cause you took him in the first round, most likely, you know, you're, you're hurting bad when he doesn't produce those, those wide receiver number wide receiver one numbers. Um, yeah. Funny story though. I want to say this real quick. I don't know if you saw my, my tweet the other day. Uh, so I, I got, we got hit up on Facebook, uh, about a trade question. And this, this girl comes and she goes, what do you think about this trade? The first place team traded with the last place team. The last place team gave up their, their number one running back. And I was like, okay, well, who, wait, who, or no, they said like the number, their one, number one, they, one, number one player. Sorry. And I was like, okay, well I need a little bit more detail. Yeah. Long story short, turns out that it ended up being the first place team gave up their kicker for Deandre Hopkins. <laughs> And I was like, you know, I am all for like not vetoing or reversing any trade ever. In this case, hell to the no. Like, that's not cool. Like, that just ruins a league, in my opinion. And so I threw it out on Twitter. And this this feed blew up. You got to go look at some of these responses. People are just like... People are just like livid about this. It's not even their league. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. But I just could not believe that trade. Like, wh- this is wrong, man. Like, you got to have some. Inte- Sorry, you got to have some integrity Integrity when you play. Like, 
That's just yes. messed up, man. There's no reason for that. Now, if it was like, I mean, the now if the it was only like, thing that would make this trade okay at this point would be if the last place team changed their name to Flock of Sheep because they just got fleeced. I mean, <laughs> I, right? All right, man. It's, yeah, I don't know. Like, ridiculous. I mean, the only way, like, maybe it's a dicey league, and it's like. You gave up all of your picks plus the kicker to get D Hop. Like, fine, maybe. In that case, that's sort of legit. But if it's literally just the kicker for DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, there are literally people that, like constant. Ugh. I mean, I got like over 100 responses on this. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Bunch of them were like, uh, you reverse it and you kick those motherfuckers out of the league, and I was like, I hundred percent agree, man. Like, no way. Yeah, you know, a couple people were like, oh, you should ask the last place team what their, you know, what their reasoning is, and I was like, does it even matter at this point? <laughs> if they're gonna be that, I, I, no. Anyway, we can move on. I just wanted to tell that little story because it was sort of interesting because we were on the Hopkins. Yeah, that's uh, it's bad. That, that's horrendous. very bad. That was horrendous. All right, so uh, Devin Funches, we already talked about, mm-hmm. also nearing a return. Ty is still questionable with his calf. Um, I, I would say he's definitely unlikely to play. But I agree. I mean, I, I just think everything that I saw was that he was going to be out for a few weeks. Um, so. This this would probably be towards the end of the few, but you know it could be something that lingers on as well. Mm-hmm. So, all right, that's it for injuries at this point. Unless you got anybody else to add, but uh, nope, I'm good. Let's let's go ahead and uh, and finish up here with our week eleven picks. We've got our highest scoring, lowest scoring fantasy games. What do you got for highest? Uh, so I went a little unobvious, I feel like, but I went Panthers Fal- Falcons for my highest scoring game. Um, not I don't think it's the most obvious pick, but here's my reasoning for this: is you know the Falcons' offense, as we know, is is legit despite Freeman being out. Um, I think they can move the ball. Um, Panthers' offense is. It's good, especially McCaffrey. We know McCaffrey will get his, right? But I, but I think, yeah. you know, they can take advantage of this weak Falcons t- t- uh, defense, which, oddly enough, New Orleans did not last week. But I think uh, this could just be kind of a, a shootout game, in my opinion, just because of uh, matchups, yeah. really, more than anything. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I definitely can see Allen having a really good day mm-hmm. uh, along with CMC. Um, I'm going to keep it in the uh, NFC South division here and go with the Saints at Bucks. Um, it, it's actually kind of fun that all four of these teams in the same division are playing this week, so might as well highlight it. Um, as you said, the Saints completely fell flat last week against Atlanta. Um, They have a very good chance to redeem themselves against the uh, now Vernon Hargraves-less Bucks defense. Uh, That was another news and notes thing we didn't really highlight, but we don't really talk about defensive players. Hargraves has been absolute garbage this year and has been burned uh, almost at an Asante Samuel-like level this year. So... (laughs) Um, uh, and, and that's Asante on the Eagles, not not necessarily when he was with the Patriots. I feel like he was probably better then. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I just like this game. I mean, Winston could could have another 350 yards and uh, you know six interceptions uh, in this game, but a couple touchdowns. Um, I'm hoping Godwin bounces back in this one as well. Uh, I just I just think there's there's too much talent on the field in this game for it to be Mm -hmm. low scoring. So I'm going to put it at high. So speaking of low, what do you, what do you have there? 
Ah, uh, so my low scoring game is going to be Jets and Redskins. I mean, I think we're going to get a couple kind of, you know, there'll be a couple guys to score touchdowns. But overall, I mean, neither one of these offenses are worth a damn. So I know the defenses aren't very good either, but sometimes it just doesn't matter. You know, you can't exploit a good, def- a bad defense if you don't have a good offense. So that's, yeah, that's where I'm going here. All right. All right. Again, I will stick in uh, one of the same divisions as your team, the Jets there, and and go with the Bills at Dolphins. Um, I mean, Bills were one of the lowest scoring games last week, as were the Dolphins. And um, I think they're just going to take this game to new heights, maybe make it like one of those nine to seven finishes uh, or, or like a 13 to 10. Dolphins are hot right now, though. Uh, I never thought I'd say that this season, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're looking strong, except for the running game. Uh, Kalen Ballage uh, had like 2.2 yards per carry on 20 carries last uh, week. So you're, whoever picked him up, you're, you're probably dropping him at this point, I would hope, unless you're very, very desperate at running back. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this game's got the beard and Singletary kind of written all over it again yeah. for like nine, nine to seven points or, or 13 to 10, or maybe we'll just shoot the difference and call it a nine to 10. Uh, all right. Sleepers busts again, just for the viewers and or listeners, we try to pick our guys for the, uh, the, the busts, I'm sorry, the sleepers, yeah outside of the top 14 quarterbacks, the top 30 running backs, top 40 receivers and inside the top 10 for quarterbacks, top 20 for running backs and top 30 for receivers for the busts all based on fantasy pros, half PPR ratings, rankings, whatever you want to call them. So who you got for your sleepers? Um, So as much as I just said that the Jets Redskins game is going to be low scoring, I'm going with Sam Darnold. Um, dude, there's not a lot of quarterbacks I loved late. They're all kind of like meh. Um, I did throw up my mouth a little bit when I. What the hell just happened? <laughs> For anybody watching, AJ AJ C and Ghost over here. Um, okay. Um, I get it. All right, so Sam Darnold. Um, I was like, "What the hell?" Right. Entertainment factor. Sure. I literally thought you like had a bug fly up in your face or something. <laughs> I had no idea what the hell you were trying to do there, but then I got it. Um, yeah. So, do I love it? No. Is it? You know, just taking advantage of a really bad defense is possible, man. I'm hoping you have a better option. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I do, I do. BDNF. Oh, Big Nick Nick Bowles coming at ya. Hmm. Look, Indy just lost to the Beard and Company. I mean, that's that's heartbreak hmm. at, at almost its highest level. Um, and uh, we already talked about Foles. He's ready to to retake the reins here from from the mustache. Mustache has done a good good job in his steed. Um, but he's getting DD back. He's already got DJ Chark, the better DJ at this point. Do, 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 um, do, 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 do. He's got Fournette. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is this is a pretty good offense when you look at it on paper. I just think they need the leadership there, and mm-hmm. clearly, there's no better leader in NFL than Nick Foles. So, there, I said it. I mean it. And that's that's a fact. <laughs> Man. Uh I I have um I have things I probably should not say on air that are jokes, so I will I will leave them for uh after air here. Alright, my running back, I'm going Duke Johnson. It's it's ugly after top thirty, I'm not gonna lie. Um <laughs> 
so many injuries, so many bye weeks. It's just ugly. So I went Duke Johnson, who's just kind of getting work in the passing game. I would have gone Kareem Hunt, but he's playing tonight, so we're not allowed to. Uh, but Duke Johnson's the guy who, kind of for the same reason as Hunt, he's just getting work in the passing game, so he's at least like a PPR option type of thing. Yeah, I uh, I actually was originally thinking of going with Geis here, but I went with the guy that I just traded for, who you gave me a ration of shit about trading for, and that's Mr. Terry Cohen. Um, part of it, trades <laughs> suck, dude. Part of it is because David Montgomery is a little banged up; he could potentially miss. Yeah, this week. rolled his ankle. Although he, although he is practicing uh, in a mm. limited fashion, so. Even with that, they may hold him back a little bit, try to limit him in this game. So Cohen's going to continue to be, you know, a, a PPR darling here. He had a really good week last week. I think he's just finally starting to hit his stride, and he's the ultimate handcuff for Montgomery. You know, he he's up there in my mind with Madison and uh, and uh, Armstead as far as like the top handcuffs, although he actually plays more than those guys. So yeah, I like Cohen this week. And, and if Montgomery's not playing, I'm damn, damn well. No, I'm starting him in that league. I traded for him in. <laughs> All right, man. So my receiver is going to be Hunter Renfro. Um, I mean, he's been, he's been kind of coming on the last few weeks Two of the last three weeks. He's been really good. Uh, and he gets that since he man, it's just absolutely garbage. So, I, you know, I'm feeling a I'm feeling a low end wide receiver three action here at the at the minimum for him. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm gonna go with uh, Philip Dorsett. I mean, look, I love the Eagles, but their pass defense is is shit. So, you know, to me, with as beatable as they are, and I'm honestly I'm a little surprised that they didn't jump on Vernon Hargraves. Although I guess they were smart enough to realize, well, guys, we're already really bad here. We don't need to be even worse. So <laughs> let's let him pass on. Maybe. Um, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, I just I just feel like this is a Dorset in the red zone kind of game. Um, I, I don't really know who else is going to score for them. I mean, they have a lot of options, obviously, and all of their running backs are finally healthy. Uh, but I just like Dorsett this week. I think he's he's going to be a really good feature for that game. Yeah, I, I was looking at Dorsett as well, but uh, just went somewhere else. All right, to so my quarterback bust here. Uh, we're going to go Philip Rivers. You know, I've seen him ranked in the top ten in a bunch of of, of rankings. I just, I just don't see it, man. Like. The offensive line is still bad. Um, Mike Williams has not been what we thought he was going to be this, this been this year, and maybe that's because of Philip Rivers. I, I'm not sure. I mean, Rivers has a lot of passing yards, and that's fine, I guess. But he's not scoring touchdowns. He's, you know, he's just getting hit. He's making poor throws. Uh, he's throwing a lot of picks. So you know, I think three weeks in a row. I think I looked at at least from Fantasy Pros, whatever scoring system they use by default, it's 11 points, 12 points, 13 points, three weeks in a row. I, I, I'm not, I can't trust him. Despite yeah. the weapons and who Philip Rivers should be, I can't trust it right now. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's a definite good pick. But I got to go with Mr. Tom Brady. Bye, Tom. See ya. The GOAT still has nightmares from Phillies D in Super Bowl 52. And um, I think they're just going to get back into his head. Uh, I know both teams have had a bye week to rest and think about this game. And you best bet your ass that Philly is going <laughs> to come out at home and probably just play the Rocky theme song the entire game and then just just rock the hell out of Tom. So he's going to be my my, my uh, fainting goat this week, and uh, he's going to be scurred. 
Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. All right, man. Um, so my running back bust is going to be Marlon Mack. Uh, and he's just not really being involved in the passing game. They're, they're really starting to get Naeem Hines involved there. Now, maybe that was with Hoyer. Maybe that was by design. Uh, but it does have to worry you a little bit. Um, and because, you know, when he was starting to get involved earlier in the year in the passing game. So now that he's not, that does hurt his value a little bit. Uh, do I think he's unstartable? No. But I would not, I do not think he's going to return his ranking value right now. Yeah, I can uh, I could see that. Um, so bust wise, I know this was my highest scoring game, but I'm actually going to go with Kamara here. Uh, he had a very weak showing and a really good matchup last week. Um, you know, granted, all of the Saints had a weak showing, but you know, Tampa's not any kind of cakewalk as far as rushing defense goes. I mean, they're they're a pretty tough D to run on, so. I definitely think he's going to have his work cut out for him. And obviously he's a little healthier than David Johnson. I mean, I feel like you would hope so. I probably just stepped on when I saw those ghosts is healthier than David Johnson right now. But (laughs) um, yeah, I mean, this, this worries me. I mean, Tampa shut down McCaffrey earlier this year. So (laughs) You got to think about that too, and and Kamara is a very dynamic player. But if he's still not potentially a hundred percent, this could be another tough game for him. Yeah, I, I am a little worried about Kamara, but I'm still rolling him out there because it's Kamara. You have to. Yeah. Um, so my receiver here is Christian Kirk. You know, I know he had blow up game last week. Playing San Fran again. Typical theme of the bus is whoever's going to get San Fran, right? Um, <laughs> Usually, yeah. He was he was shut down last time they played San Fran two weeks ago, despite the Cardinals playing overall pretty well in that game. Um, but I'm just, I'm just expecting a repeat performance against San Fran that he had two weeks ago, which was basically nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go with uh, Stefan Diggs now. I, part of me really hopes that I'm wrong on this. I hope you're I wrong. Own him. <laughs> like, the hell's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we both own him in a lot of leagues, so really hope this is just a, a bad pick on my part, which it very well could be because I've been very bad at picking sleepers and busts lately, so kind of goes along with my whole Scott Fishbowl team. Garbage. Um But Denver's got a legit pass defense. You know, those guys are no joke. And if Thielen's out again, which, as we've already stated, it sounds like he very likely will be, all Denver has to do is key in on Diggs. Um, you know, this this could turn into more of a Dalvin Cook game mm-hmm. uh, or maybe a Rudolph game. I don't really know if they still have Laquan Treadwell um, or... Treadquan Lowell. I, B- I don't know. BC Johnson, know. man. <laughs> no, no, <I> mean, <laughs> no. I'm that, kidding. No. Nope. I, I feel you. Yeah, I just, I just think this is, this is a very tough matchup. It is. For, it is. It is a tough matchup. I, I kind of really feel you on that one. All of the Minnesota offense. Yeah. Um, I mean, Denver's not the juggernaut they were a few years ago, but they're still a top notch defense. I, you know. Yeah. So. I mean, so defenses here. We've got, um, you know, we get the slide up here. I'm going with the first one on the list, and that is the New York Jets. Um, it's you know, the streamomatic from Tyler Thompson has them the, the highest rated team out of all the teams on this list as well, and for good reason. I mean, the Redskins are just pathetic. I I think they've scored like over. <laughs> Like double digit points like three times in the last you know, like seven weeks or something crazy. Haskins just gonna be prone to sacks, turnovers, you know. It's just you can't feel good about the Redskins offense. And if you know, if any team is gonna get something done here on in this game, I feel like all the fantasy points are coming from the Jets and quite possibly most from the defense. So, 
Yeah, speaking of defense, uh, my phone just buzzed at me, and oh, I yeah. just looked Deontay up Johnson, and saw African the play Russian. here. Deontay Johnson just got absolutely demolished on that. Oh hit. yes, I saw that. Immediately drew the flag uh, for unnecessary roughness, which it clearly was. It was a helmet to helmet. He can barely uh, walk. You're not seeing I mean, this yet, but they're like basically like carrying him off the field. His legs are moving, but he doesn't know where he is. Yeah, you'll see it in a few minutes because I, mean, I, I know you're behind me. But it, it, it's an ugly scene, dude. These these Browns oh, defensive geez. guys are just getting absolutely dirty, dude. They're they're just they're hitting high at this point. You don't like to see that, man. So no, I, I mean, and this this guy's jumping around like a jackass, like pissed off at the play. Don't use your helmet. No, when you're uh, he he got ejected actually. They're they're like, ejecting him. Oh, that's what it was. Nice. Okay. Ah, good yeah. man. Good well, for he them. He be. needs to get he needs to get suspended and fined. Boom. I mean, well, ejected I get, and fined. I at get least. you have momentum and you're going towards somebody, but you, you need to be able to control yourself somehow. Yeah, he I mean, he clearly be hit him pretty high. Not going on the knees, but like just lower yourself enough to go at the body and break a rib or two. But I mean, come on, this is now three guys that have been taken out of the Steelers offense. I don't think that was necessarily the Cleveland game plan to go in to win this game. Like, Hey guys, if we're going to do this. We just got to start injuring people. You know, that's our chance. No, I, I don't think any team ever does this shit on purpose, but yeah. people are in the moment. They, they got to think about it a little the- more. I'll say this: the one, the one, the hit against the hit, the hit against Juju was just kind of unfortunate. They all just kind of like yeah. creamed them, you know, whatever. Um, obviously, Connor was a shoulder injury. What are you gonna do there? This one was dirty. This one was the safety was flying in from across the field and like clearly Can't went high. Um, it's just ugly. So, yeah. Hi, right, man. What's your so, what's anyway, your defense pick? Um, so I can yeah. laugh at it. I mean, it. if we got points for injured players, then I would have picked Cleveland. But, <laughs> again, it's a Thursday night game, so well, we don't might, do they that. Might, they might get a shutout out here. <laughs> I am uh, I'm going to have to just go with the Rocky theme, play it long, play it loud, play it hard. Philly, Philly, because F New England. That's why. Super Bowl 52 champs coming at you and new england's got a stout defense they've been probably the best defense all year long got it understand it guess what they were probably one of the best teams all year long and in uh 2017 too so bye bye tom Hmm. sack city (laughs) okay I'll, i'll i'll let you i'll let you ride with that one but uh I'm just gonna say I don't I do not I do not agree with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, we're allowed to disagree. I mean, I will allow you to have an. I'm, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say there's not gonna be a one. lot of people starting <laughs> the Patriots defense this week, but um, yeah, that'll be. Well, that'll I'm be sure they are, but I have the Jets and the Patriots in multiple leagues, and I'm starting the Jets over them. So no, I said that I'm gonna guess there's not a lot of teams starting. A lot of people starting the Eagles' defense over the Patriots. Ah, got it. No, or I against, don't own the or Eagles against the Patriots. So because I pretty much own the Jets and, and Patriots in every league. So yeah. All right, man. So that's all we got for your Week Eleven prep. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck this week. We'll catch you next week. See ya. All right. Good game. What the hell was that? Hearts.